So often on the show, we talk about the Tesla battery pack in South Australia, the very large, the largest battery pack in the world. Um, but not so often do we talk about smaller power packs, specifically this one that is at the University of Queensland, Brisbane. It is a 1.1 megawatt pack or 2.15 megawatt hours okay. of energy storage, and it has saved the school $74,000 Australian in one quarter. Wait, so in three months, it saved in, that much money? In three months of its operation, it has saved the school $74,000. How is that possible? Do people come by and just stick dollars to it? Like no, no, no. I mean, so obviously on the show we've talked before, especially when we're talking bi-directional charging, which is this is. I mean, it's just a big bi-directional battery mm -hmm. that you hook up to the grid. So you might be thinking that, okay, what it's going to be doing is buying and selling energy. So you buy energy when it's cheap and it sells it when it's expensive. Mm -hmm. um, and it does do that. But 62% of that $74,000 came from Frequency Control and Ciliary Services, or FCAS. What is that? That that essentially means that it's helping to stabilize the grid. So FCAS providers are paid for every interval in which they are available to respond to a frequency event. So for example, there was a coal plant that went offline okay. and the power pack was able to stabilize the grid. Oh, is that what we're looking at here in this graph? Yeah, so you'll notice um, that squiggly line, the purple one, that is the grid's uh, frequency. So oh, in, in Australia, it's 50 hertz. 50 hertz. In the United States, it's 60 hertz. Okay. And basically, if the hertz starts to go lower, then you have less actual like energy mm -hmm. in the lines. And the reason for that big drop off there was basically a coal plant tripped offline, uh -oh. as they often do. And the power pack was able to instantly kick into action and help to stabilize the power generation. Interesting, and it gets paid for that. It gets paid for that, it gets paid a pretty penny. But that's not to say that it wasn't also good at buying and selling power. So let's take a look at this first graph here. Okay, Ooh, this so is complicated. But... It's, it gets a little complicated, let's just kind of explain. So the line that you're seeing, the, the line graph that's mm -hmm. going across the screen, that's the price of energy, and that is dollars per megawatt hour. Okay. And so, Oh, and this is over the course of a day. Over the course of a day. Okay. And the bars that you're seeing is the charging and discharging of the battery. Okay, so red is when they're charging up the battery and paying for electricity, and purple is when they're selling electricity. And discharging the but battery. But this graph can't be right, Jesse. This this graph has to be wrong because mm -hmm. it says that around 2.30 in the afternoon, they were buying power for $52 per megawatt hour. But then right after that, around 3 o'clock, they were selling it for $2,000 per megawatt hour. That's absolutely correct. And in fact, the graph is logarithmic. So- Oh, so uh, it should be like way up here. It should be way up there. It's just, it wouldn't even make any sense. It wouldn't wait, look like anything because- wait, so they're buying it for relatively cheap and then selling it for astronomically high? Yeah, so essentially, you can kind of think of this as like a stock trader, mm -hmm. for example. If, for example, let's just say Tesla was at fifty dollars a share, yeah, buy, and, and you and you you were buying up shares, buy, 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 and then Tesla shot up to two thousand dollars a share, sell, 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 and you start selling. This is what it's doing over the course of a day. So this is a day Wait, so trader. Every day it's day trading a, like this. A day trader of energy. Oh, so that's how it made so much money. That wasn't even a majority of the of the money that it made. Wow. That's how it was able to make so much money. So here's another example, right? It starts discharging. It, the pack, right, selling for a relatively low price of energy. Okay. And you might be saying, why are you selling for a low price of energy? It's because it predicted that the price of energy would go negative. Yeah, look at this. Right around nine o'clock in the morning, the, the price went down to negative $64 a megawatt hour. So it was getting paid to give energy to the grid at, oh, it was, in, the, so in the wee hours of the morning. So it's basically emptying its battery out so it could buy all that cheap power. And it was power. making money while emptying out the battery. Then when the price of energy went negative, it bought energy for negative money. So, so it, it was making money. It got paid on both ends of the spectrum there. What? So that is the strength of bi-directional grid tied battery storage. Wow. And that is something that utilities up until this point simply have not had. They have not been able to store energy, right? According to the New York Times, in the UK in April, the price of electricity went negative 66 times. That's twice as often as in any previous month in the last decade. So 66 times in April, UK residents were paid to use electricity. Right. So I just want you to stop for a second. That means you turn on your blender 
and they're paying you to use your blender. <laughs> right. That means that once we have vehicle to grid, V to G for our EVs, you could conceivably be paid to charge your car. Right. Uh, better yet, you could get paid to charge it and then get paid again to send power back to the grid. Kind of like what we were talking about with that Australia story. It shows that Australia is not the only place in the world where electricity prices go negative and that it's possible that people could actually make money off of this. Yeah, Greg Jackson, the CEO of Octopus Energy said, this needs to become the normal. It's a preview of what the future is going to look like. 